Breathe on us, breath of God. Guide our hearts as we seek to listen to what you would have us hear. We pray that through the words I have prepared, through the words that we have heard from Scripture, through the meditations of our hearts, you would teach us what we need to learn right now. We know that you, you have prepared our hearts for this, and we ask you t- in Jesus' name to do what you will. Amen. So the kingdom is like a sower who went out to seed. It's, it was very interesting to me as I was studying this week that some translations say farmer, some translations say sower, but the, the word is actually a person who continually sows. The, the sowing part is a, is a verb, an uh, uh, active, ongoing verb. So the, it, it sounds a little bit strange, but the, the uh, continually sowing person is really what, uh, kind of what Jesus is saying. A person who is scattering seed from the beginning, who is looking for fruit from the seeds that he scatters. He's looking for these seeds to grow up and bear fruit. <clears throat> Now, I've been a Christian since uh, 1978, Um, and I know that there are people in this room who, who, for whom, you know, this journey has been much longer than that, that you've uh, became a Christian, you know, before I was even born. Uh, I also know that there may be people in this room who haven't been on this journey for that long, who have only been walking with Jesus for a few years, or even a few months, or a few weeks, or maybe people who haven't decided to start the journey yet, haven't accepted Jesus and, and walking with him. But for, for all of us, this, this, for those of us who have been on the journey for a long time, for those of us who even aren't on the journey, Jesus is trying to tell us something. And he's trying to say, God is planting seeds. And the condition of your heart determines whether or not that's going to bear any fruit. So... Really, this is a parable that's helping us to understand how do we grow? How do we grow in our faith? We all, those of us who are on this journey, we we want to grow. We want to feel God's presence more. We want to have the power of God more in our lives. We want to know the peace and the joy and, and the things that we find promised in Scripture. We want to know these things more. And Jesus is kind of showing us how how we do that. A lot of us are... Not, not a lot of us. All of us are soil. We have some kind of soil. Our hearts are one of these four kinds of soil that Jesus is telling about. But it's God who makes the seeds grow once they've been planted in us. We, our responsibility is just what kind of soil are we offering for these seeds to be planted. So, so here's the main point. In case, uh, in case you um, lose me I know some people, uh, they're, they're, uh, you start thinking about something else or, or, uh, or, or you just don't understand my strange English or whatever. But the, the, main, the main point is that our responsibility is not to try to bear fruit. I've heard, I've heard this even preached that way. We have to go out and bear fruit. A, a, a tree even, an apple tree, a pear tree, whatever, a tree can't make itself bear fruit. It's God that makes the fruit. And our responsibility is to be the kind of soil, soil that the sower can use and that will grow and bear fruit. So the first thing we need to understand as we go through this is who does what. It, it, it may seem kind of obvious, but it's good for us to kind of walk through this and really understand that, that uh, we don't make the growth and we don't make the fruit. So the seed, the seed is the word. It's the word about the kingdom of God. And it's not just, it's not just Jesus' words, the individual words, the sentences that he says. It's not just the things that we find in the Bible, but Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the kingdom. These, so these are words not only about himself, but the seed is Jesus himself his own character, his own heart, his own life, his own righteousness. 
And what is the growth? It, it, it does say many different places in Scripture. Uh, one place is 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 7. Only God makes things grow. When we plant things physically or spiritually or emotionally or whatever, any growth that happens, any positive growth that happens is because God makes it grow. We, we have some control over the environment, over whether or not it can grow in us but it's God who makes the growth. And what is the fruit? The fruit is showing God's character, showing Jesus' character. The fruit is who God is in Jesus Christ. And part of what this parable tells us is there's seeds scattered everywhere, and we don't know what kind of soil another person is. We sometimes don't even know what kind of soil we are in any given day. Some of that fruit will, some of that, those seeds will grow and some of those seeds will bear fruit. So who's doing what here? Another thing that this parable teaches us is that the kingdom grows slowly. It doesn't grow suddenly. It doesn't grow quickly. And it it has its seasons. It has its times where the soil is just resting. It has its times where there's little tiny sprouts coming up. It has its times where the the seeds have grown into full plants and they are bearing whatever fruit they bear. But there's time between when the seeds fall in the soil and when the fruit actually comes. There's a, there's a time there. And sometimes we, we get impatient. We, 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 we want to say, okay, you know, today I'm good soil, so I want to have fruit today. But it takes time. It takes time for God to grow these things in us. And we need to wait for God to do what God is going to do. There's also it, it, one, one of the things Jesus was trying to tell the disciples and telling us, too, as we're looking at, you know, trying to, trying to bring other people into the church or trying to introduce other people to Jesus, whatever, some people are going to bear fruit and some people aren't. But some will bear fruit. The promise is that some will bear fruit. We have our responsibility. Responsibility is, as if you take apart the word, right? It's the ability to respond. So our responsibility is how we respond to the word. And that's the condition of our hearts. That's the condition of our soil. Our responsibility is the condition of our soil, the condition of our hearts. And in a sense, we are also one who, once we have borne fruit, to scatter the seed, but we don't actually do the seed scattering. We just produce the fruit, and God uses that to scatter seeds to other people. So what is this fruit that God is looking for? What's the fruit for which God is looking? As, as you may be very familiar with, the, the easiest way to answer that question is from Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Now, again, we have, to, we have to understand that these are not things we can produce ourselves. These are not things we can do. This is not our to-do list of how to be a Christ- Christian. We can't, we can't try to love what we can, but... We, we won't produce the fruit that God's looking for. We can make it look like we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. But if it's not coming from Jesus' character in us, it's not the fruit that God's looking for. If, uh, if we think that being a Christian means trying to be good, then I'm afraid we've missed Christ, if that's what we think. We've missed We've missed what Jesus teaches. If we think that I believed in Jesus Christ and now I have to try to be a good person, now I have to try to love other people, now I have to do all of the things that I think Christians are supposed to do. If that's what we think, we've missed, we've missed Christ. If, if, we want to, if we want to feel good about doing good to others, if that's what we want, then Christianity is not the right religion for us need to find another religion. Because if you really follow what Jesus is trying to show us, that's not what Christianity is really about. 
Christianity is really about Jesus Christ himself and about him growing in us. It's not about trying to be a good person. So what's the fruit for which God is looking? So, my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. For when we were in the realm of the flesh, we bore fruit for death. It's from Romans chapter 7. The fruit for which God is looking is us dying to ourselves so that he can br- produce the fruit of his own character in us and spread that to others. That's how the kingdom spreads, through God making Jesus in each one of us. If the character of Christ is not showing in us, then we're showing death. And I know some people say my sermons are confusing. It's probably because of sentences like the one I just said. So I'll say it again, and maybe it's still confusing, but we, if, if the character of Christ is not showing us, then we are showing death. And, and we don't like to hear that. And some people say, well, that, that can't be true. I'm, I'm still alive. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. I don't kill people. I don't steal from, you know. How, how can that be death? Well, I, I'm, I'm not making this up. This is what the scripture says. This is what Paul is writing to us in Romans, saying either, either you are belonging to another and showing Christ or you are showing death. Those are, those are the only two options. There's either Christ flowing through us or not Christ flowing through us. There's either life flowing through us or death flowing through us. Those are the only two options. So if the character of Christ is not showing us, then we are showing death. And this death is simply just not Christ. So what is the fruit for which God is looking A lot of this soil stuff that we're talking about, a lot of what produces Christ instead of death is is our attitude. Part of how we make our our, uh, soil, our hearts, able to bear the fruit is, is, is is in our attitude. Is our attitude like the world around us or is it like Christ? And that's part of how, as the life of Christ grows in us, our attitude becomes more and more like Christ and less and less like the world around us. Another, Another way to talk about this attitude is if our attitude is like Christ, then there's only one thing we want. There's only one thing we want. That one thing is we want the will of the Father to be done. We want to glorify the Father by being a part of His will, being done on this earth. And that's the only thing we want. If, if we have that attitude, then we are bearing fruit. Then the Christ is growing in us. All the other attitudes that we have are often of the world. A lot of the things that we want, that we think are even good, they're coming from what we've learned from the world and not from Christ's character. So the kingdom spreading is about fruit making more seed, and that seed makes more fruit, and the fruit makes more seed, and so on and so forth. So the, the purpose for us bearing fruit is not for us. The purpose for us bearing fruit is so that God can take those seeds and spread the kingdom. That's how God chose to do this. In, in the Romans passage we read, that you might belong to another. We belong to Jesus Christ, and I, I think, I don't know about you, but when I used to pray, you know, about belonging to God, I was, I was mostly just thinking about me, that I belong. But if, if it's true that I belong completely, then all of my clothes belong to God, my car belongs to God, my house belongs to God, my education belongs to God, my talents, my gifts, my abilities belong to God, my body belongs to God, my connection to other people belongs to God. All of it belongs to God. What does it mean to be a Christian enjoying Christ? Enjoying Christ. I think sometimes we hear this all as it's it's difficult. It's something we have to work really hard at. 
But the closer we get to Christ, the more we will want to get closer to Christ, the more we will enjoy Christ, and we will find the things that we used to think we enjoy were really pale in comparison. So how do I become okay with failure? Because if we're honest, a lot of times we're not bearing that much fruit, if any. So, so how, do we, how do we think through that? How do we understand what's happening? How, how, do I, how, do I say, how do I face the reality, the, the truth that I'm not bearing fruit at this moment or very much? What happens when we don't bear fruit? Well, <clears throat> the world's thinking would tell us that we're bad then. I'm bad. I'm not doing it right. When, when we're failing to bear fruit, we say to ourselves, I, I can't do it. And, and that's actually a good place to be because it's true. We can't do it. But then, we, you know, we feel like we're a failure. We feel like we're, we're not doing it right. We're feeling like, what, what should I do? We feel like we want to give up. The only way for us to, to get over this is, we, first of all, we have to get over ourselves. We have to just realize that if we're going to bear fruit, it's because we've let go. We've stopped trying to bear fruit. And we've become a soil that wants to soak up Christ and bear the fruit of Christ's own character. And that's all we want. But God is continually sowing seed. And sometimes we may read this parable and think this is a one-time deal. Like, I, I heard the word of God once and I believed. And then I became one of those four soils for life. But we change soils multiple times every day. There are times where we really are good soil and where the character of Christ is growing in us. And there are times where we are one of the other th uh, two soils. The, the soil that's completely hard, that one doesn't even grow. So, As long as we're on this planet, every day we ha get to choose how we receive the seed how we receive the seed of Jesus Christ that he's giving us. And what is the process of growth anyway? The process of growth, uh, one, one place that talks to us about the, the process of growth is, uh, is the book of he Hebrews. In chapter 12, it says that God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So the process of growth is sometimes going to be painful, and that's another reason why we don't bear fruit, is we don't, we don't like the, the, the pain of things being taken out of us and Christ being put into us, because sometimes it is painful. Sometimes we have to face ourselves and everything in us, and, and we don't like that. Sometimes we have to face the things that have happened to us in the past or the things that we've done in the past. We have to face the, the pain of those. Otherwise, they stay in us and they keep the seed from being able to grow. The discipline is the growth process. God's forming Christ's character in us when we are good soil. But the result is Christ's character in us and another thing here in Hebrews, peace. Almost all the religions of the world are, are ways to try to help us have peace. But Jesus Christ is our peace. And if we are allowing the, the life of Christ to grow in us, we are that peace. We become that peace. We have that peace. <clears throat> Righteousness and holiness are, best, are basically the same things. And the, the world and religion talks about righteousness and holiness as doing good, as, as being uh, a pure person, a moral person. But if you read the Bible carefully, righteousness and holiness are basically words for Christ's character. We become the righteousness of Christ because of what he did for us on the cross. Righteousness is describing Jesus' character, Jesus' life, Jesus' attitude. It's not something we can do apart from having Christ made in us. 
So how do we become okay with failure? First of all, we just have to face it. We have to admit to ourselves and to God that we're, we're not bearing fruit. Failure basically is not being ready for the seeds when it comes, not being ready for them to grow in us because of one of three conditions. And I think we need to all really honestly listen to these things and, and ask ourselves the question, is, is this me? Does this describe me? And, and this is a, a good thing, you know, in part of our prayer to do often. It, does this describe what's going on in my heart right now? Am I completely hard, completely crows? That's probably not true of anyone in this room. But there are times where our, our hearts can become very, very hard, very cold, very closed. And this is not necessarily because this person is a bad person. Sometimes really, really bad things happen to us that other people have done to us. Sometimes that can make our hearts so hard that the seed can't get into there. And we need, we need help from God to, to soften that up. And God can do that. But sometimes our hearts are, are so closed, they're like the path where the seed just sits on top and then the bird comes and takes it away. But the other two soils that describe a lot of Christians, unfortunately, is our shallowness and, and distraction. Shallowness is we, we receive the seed with joy, but underneath our, our hearts are still pretty hard, and it, doesn't, it just doesn't take root. We're not, really, we're not willing to let it go in deep because we're not really willing to let go of ourselves and let God do what God wants to do. Or distraction. <laughs> distraction is increasing in our world at a dramatic pace. There's so many things that, to distract us in every, every area of our lives. And y you know as well as I do what these distractions are for you. A lot of the distractions, though, are just, they have to do with doing things the way the world does them. Thinking the way the world thinks around us. This is the state of many Christians, unfortunately. Even though we do a lot of the thing, Christian things, going to church and reading our Bibles and praying and all those things, they can be distractions too. If, it, if it's not for us about desiring Christ and wanting Christ to grow in us and let go of everything else, then either there's some hardness in there or we're being distracted. How do we make ourselves to be good soil? It's very important for us each day, not, not just on Sunday morning, but each day, each moment of each day, be willing to let go of all else and desire Christ above anything else. It's, it's simple. I desire only Christ as I go through my day, as I meet other people. Let God take care of the growth. So how can we grow? This is a kind of summary of most of the things that we talked about. Fruit is not what we do. First of all, we have to get that out of our heads or we're never, ever going to bear fruit. It's not something we can do. It's something that God makes in us if we are good soil. In Matthew 13, 23, the, the end of the parable that we just read, Jesus is telling us that fruit is hearing and understanding. Understanding is focusing on making our hearts good soil so that Christ can grow in us. It's not receiving the word and then doing the word. It's receiving the word and then letting the word grow Christ's character in us. This is what true Christianity is really all about. It's not having some kind of belief that gets us into heaven, that gets us on the good side of God. That's not what Christianity is about. It's not about trying to be a good person. That's not what Christianity is about. That's what a lot of people think Christianity is about, but that's not what Jesus said it's about. What Christianity is really about is us giving ourselves to God as a vessel, as, as soil, as whatever image you want to use so that he can put Christ in us and show the world Christ through us. 
let go of everything else and desire Christ more than any, everything else, belonging to him, everything that we are, belonging to him, so that he can bring the fruit of his character forth in our lives and that other people will know that we belong to him. And that's how God scatters seeds through, through us, through our lives, by showing our, Jesus' character through us to the world. So if, if that seems too, too difficult or, or too difficult to understand, if that seems too, di- too difficult to do, then just ask him to show you. Ask him to teach you and then look for the answers. Look for the answers in the Bible. Look for the answers as you go through your life. Ask God to show you what it means for us to bear fruit. Ask God to show you what it means for us to let go of everything else and to desire Christ because he can do that and he will do that let's pray God we thank you so much for continually scattering seeds in us and we pray God that you would help us to let go of all else and desire only Christ that you might make Christ in us and that you might bring your kingdom to this world in the name of Jesus we pray Amen.